As you know, every nation exists to establish Christ-centered, spirit-empowered, socially responsible churches and campus ministries in every nation. Uh, on this video, we want to look at the campus ministry part of our mission statement. Here's the question uh, a lot of pastors and every campus missionary has been asking, how do we continue to do campus ministry while we are doing social distancing? How do we do campus ministry when the campus is closed, when the students are gone, when we have no access to the campus and we have no idea when they will reopen? In order to give an answer to that question, I want us to go back not just to the beginning of every nation when our mission and our vision formed, but I want to go back way beyond that to Jesus' great commission to his original disciples. Uh, he told them to go and make disciples of all nations. Uh, that's at the heart of campus ministry. Ultimately, what we're trying to do is obey that. We're trying to make disciples on the campuses in every nation. But the heart of it, of doing campus ministry, is making disciples. Um, we're going on this video. We're going to hear from Nick Jones from the United States, from Joseph Bonifacio in the Philippines, and from Carol McKeezy in South Africa. And they're going to talk different aspects about doing campus ministry in the current realities we live in. When you think about the idea of doing ministry from a remote area when you didn't have access to people, um, that's not unique to us. It's happened all throughout history, even in the early church. Um, many of Paul's letters were written from prison. He was in a situation where it wasn't a pandemic. Nevertheless, he was socially distant from the people he was trying to minister to. He was not able to have face-to-face -face mentoring, face-to-face -face discipleship, face-to-face -face, um, fellowship and connection with the people. So he used the technology that was available to him, which was letter writing sent with a courier. In those letters, he longed for the face-to-face -face connection, and he pleaded at times for Timothy to come as soon as he could to visit him in prison. But he didn't just stay on pause. He still used what was available at the time to reach out and connect for the purpose of discipleship and mentoring and leadership development and just plain old fellowship. Uh, I know you're all doing that, and we're maximizing this as much as we can. But in the meantime, we're longing for the day, like Paul, when we could connect face to face and the more meaningful type of relationship. In the meantime, we will do whatever we can to continue to make disciples on the campuses. I've been asked to talk a little bit about how do we do campus ministry in the midst of this worldwide pandemic that we all find ourselves in. As all of our students on college campuses are sent back home, everybody's quarantined to their own home. Does campus ministry keep going or does it stop? I'm here to report that campus ministry keeps going. Actually, I believe there's a, such a sense of openness like I've never seen before in ministry that I believe we are going to experience now and in the coming months, one of the greatest harvests that we've ever seen amongst this generation. And I know like you, all of us are working on content creation whether that's small group materials, whether that's taping, our large group service that we're sending out to our church or our campus meeting. But let's not underestimate the power of a personal contact because content doesn't create relationship. Right now there's tons of content for students to look at online. Many of our students are bored, they're tired of watching movies, they're probably tired of looking at content but what they're longing and desiring for more than ever in this season is personal contact. It's a genuine relationship. What I'm realizing is that I'm watching my own kids. They're lonely. They're looking for something. They're kind of tired of their campus Zoom calls with their entire class. But I watch my kids light up when one of their friends personally call them. And I watch them run outside and pace. Why? Because it's the personal connection. I want to encourage us all as leaders, so let's look at the students who have come to our churches, to come to our campus ministries. Let's find and trust the Lord. Who are the three to five students that maybe we should call and personally contact? Because as I mentioned earlier, at the end of the day, content doesn't create relationship. Thank you for what you do. I am super excited to watch what God is going to do in this generation. Really, at this time of crisis, when we're trying to figure out what to do when there's no physical meetings, what we need is to have a lens. And thankfully we have one, the four E's. Engage, establish, equip, empower. So if we think of the four E's as a lens, 
then we're asking the right questions. We're not just copying what happens in other centers, but we're saying, what is God doing in our part of the world? Let's take them one by one really quickly. Engage. How do we engage people digitally? How do we engage people from a distance? Sending a general message out on Facebook isn't engaging. That's just like engaging people with a loudspeaker on the street. Engaging is building a relationship with people. So sure, we can still send those general messages, but hopefully there's personalized ones as well. We can have direct messages to people. Hey, I'm praying for you. Hey, what? how, how are you doing right now? We can also just make up a, a smaller group and that's what we've done with our campus ministries. We've made a smaller group of people who are already going to services or going to small groups. Not a general blast, but we've looked at people who are either new believers and people who are just like one step away. Seekers, people have been peering in and added them to a Facebook group with, with their consent, obviously. And that's the ones we're sending messages to. This targets our engagement to keep it from being so general. Secondly, establish. What are the needs that our people are going through? This is a great time to, to minister to that. There's a lot of spiritual hunger in the world right now. Is it a struggle with, with internet addiction, with pornography, given with the fact that there's a lack of things to do? Is it questioning about the, the grace of God or the sovereignty of God? Is it go fighting fear and testing their faith for the first time? This is where pastors and campus missionaries are needed. See, while they can get resources and probably better ones online than what we can produce, they don't have leaders like us online. They need to know you. They need to hear from their pastor, from their campus missionary. Thirdly, equip. And there's also a lot of questions and a great time to equip people. And while we might say, hey, I don't know how to do that. I don't have a lot of production. What's great is being part of a global movement. There are people all over every nation who are producing stuff. What's great is because those people are available online. They can watch it and then we can have the discussion. Just because you didn't make it, that doesn't mean you can't have the processing with them. Engage, establish, equip, finally empower. Let's empower our people to speak God's word at this time. Let's empower our people to share how they can help. See, when we talk about what the church is doing, yeah, it's one thing to say what the institutional church is doing, how Victory or Every Nation Campus is doing these things. But what we could really be doing that takes it a step further is highlighting what the average church member is doing. I'm so proud of some of the people we have back home where they've organized cooking drives, where they cook and they, they have deliveries that are able to give to some of the poorest of the poor in the city. See, these are people who are not moving through the official organization of the church, but they are the church. And that's empowering. When the church leadership highlights and guides and sets those people as an example, it motivates the others to do it as well. In short, the four E's are a great lens for seeing how we can act at this time. Yes, we still miss the physical uh, gathering, the corporate gathering, and we will go back to that one day. But that doesn't mean we have nothing to do during this time. Let's use the four E's as a lens, and God will lead us to show us what to do. I was in the United Kingdom for six months studying Christian apologetics at Oxford when President Cyril Ramaphosa announced that the country would be imposing travel bans after declaring the national state of disaster due to the coronavirus crisis. I knew then that I needed to return home to South Africa. It was only a day after self-isolation at home that I started to show the harrowing symptoms. The symptoms became worse while I was still waiting for my test results to come back. I struggled with shortness of breath, a tight chest, and a fever. My results eventually came back and I tested positive for COVID-19. But being in self-isolation also meant that only God could be with me in the room. It meant that only God could minister to me, could comfort me, and could give me the courage and the faith that I needed through his word. I've been able to share my story through our campus ministry social media platforms, and I've had the opportunity to share the gospel. Young people are mostly on social media, and I believe that it's actually crucial for us to reach them during this time through these platforms. Coronavirus 
might have entered our lives, but it will not defeat us. We will overcome. Let us use this time to reach young people through the online platforms and share the message of hope. And this message being Christ in you, the hope of glory. I really appreciate those encouraging words from Nick and Joseph and Carol. Thank God that Carol's recovered and she's strong and uh, ready to get back and continue to provide leadership to our students in South Africa and to our campus missionaries. Uh, I really appreciate not only those three, but all of our campus missionaries who uh, really are serving our, not only our university communities and our churches, but serving Jesus in the way that they do. And I'm grateful for the pastors uh, who really still are, no matter what their age might be, they're still campus missionaries at heart. Um, we are called to change the campus and change the world. We are called to establish not only churches, but Christ-centered, spirit-empowered, socially responsible campus ministries in every nation.